So I want to pull back and not talk about the person visiting the one who's sick. We talked about the reward of visiting your brother just for the sake of Allah or your sister just for the sake of Allah, just out of that love for Allah, just to establish that connection. When they're sick, the reward is definitely multiplying. But I want to speak about it from the perspective of the one who actually is sick, the one who is in bed, going through some sort of fever, going through some sort of illness, whether they're in a hospital or at home, what is their status with Allah at that moment? And what role do the angels play in accompanying that person as they're in that situation? The Prophet وسلم, he said that when a person is sick, Allah sends two angels to accompany that person in their illness. So as you're laying in bed, you have a special two angels that come and they reside with you. And they monitor the guests that come to visit you. Now, obviously, they're going to record the reward for the ones that came to visit you. But I want you to think about when you were sick, the last time you were sick, and if you're sick right now, may Allah cure you. When you're sitting in bed and someone asks you, how are you feeling? And you're not feeling good at all. Right? You have a choice to actually talk about how bad you feel. Or you can say, Alhamdulillah, you can praise Allah and thank Allah for what you still have. You can say, Alhamdulillah, I'm making it through. And if you talk about your situation, it's only to describe it for the sake of giving an accurate picture of what you're going through, but not to complain, not to lament the situation, but to say, Alhamdulillah, to say, you know, all praises and thanks are due to Allah for what He has spared me in the midst of this illness and this sickness, right? So you're sitting there and you have that opportunity. And that could come, you know, through someone sending you a text message when you're in bed and saying, how are you doing? And you could respond with a long list of how horrible your life is right now and how you're feeling. So what actually is happening is that you have two angels that are with you that are going to monitor the response that you give to your visitor or give to the one who's checking on you and report that back to Allah. So the Prophet said these two angels sit with you and they see the guests that come to visit you or check up on you and they monitor your response. If you praise Allah and glorify Allah, then they take that response back up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds and Allah says, if I cause my slave to die as a result of this illness, then I will surely grant that person Jannah. I will give that person a garden in Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then goes on to say, and should I heal my abd, should I heal my slave, then I will replace their blood with that which is better, their flesh with that which is better, and I will wipe out their sins. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will give that person lahman khayran min lahmihi, flesh that is better than the flesh that they already have. Daman khayran min damihi, blood that is better than the blood that they already have, and I will wipe out their sins. And so if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes you to die, then you have Jannah assured because of the way that you responded. If you live, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will restore you in a better way and at the same time wipe out the sins that you carried with you to that illness. Now, that's something that only belongs to the sick person. In general, if you're patient in the midst of hardship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you rewards as a result of that. But there's something special for the one that is sick and that would help us understand the reward of the one that's visiting the sick. The Prophet ﷺ said that on the Day of Judgment, when a person stands before Allah, Allah says to the servant, O oh my servant, O oh son of Adam, I was hungry and you did not feed me. And the person would say, Ya Rabb, O oh my Lord, how could I feed you and you are the Lord of the worlds? And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala would respond and say, Don't you know that my servant so-and-so was hungry? And had you gone to my servant and fed him, then you would have found that reward with me uh, or with that person, O oh son of Adam. Meaning, had you gone to feed that hungry person, you would have found my ajr, my reward, in place of that. And Allah says, O oh my servant, O oh son of Adam, I was thirsty and you did not nourish me. And a person would say, Oh Allah, how could I nourish you and you're the Lord of the worlds? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would respond once again, that don't you know that my servant so-and-so was thirsty? And had you given my servant something to nourish themselves with, you would have found that reward with me, O son of Adam. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
O oh, son of Adam, I was sick and you did not visit me. And the person would say, how could I visit you? And you are the Lord of the worlds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a different answer than the one that he gives to the previous two. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't you know my servant so-and-so was sick. And had you gone to him, لَوْعُدْتَهُ Had you gone to visit him, لَوَجَدْتَنِي عِنْدَهُ يَبْنَ آدَمِ you would have found me with him, O son of Adam. You would have found me with that person, O son of Adam. Not my reward, you would have found me with that person, O son of Adam. And so when you are sick and patient with that illness, it's not just the reward of Allah that's with you, it's Allah himself that's with you.